Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Enough talking already, let's get busy sewing so we can sell something. Or maybe not just sew and sell, you can make these for anyone. Let's do this. Before I show you how to make these super cute sew and sell baskets, we need to understand why they're so nice and why you can sell these and why you can actually give these as a gift and someone's going to love them. First off, the sides don't flop, they don't fall down for anything. Because I used a very special stabilizer within this, and no, it's not the batting or the fusible fleece that make it stand up and nice and strong, it's this stuff right here. Now, Pellon makes this, and it's super, super sturdy. I mean, this right here can hold up anything, I'm telling you. Look at this. It doesn't flop, it stands really good, but yet we can maneuver this how we want within this little basket. And I'm gonna show you all that. This particular extra firm stabilizer, it has glue on one side. Now we're really not going to use the glue, and if it adheres a little bit as we're ironing or pressing, that's okay. But we're not really using it for the glue, so to speak. This right here is actually going to be sewn in. The next product that I use makes this little basket super functional. It's called Matte Vinyl Fuse, and it's almost like laminating your fabric in a sense. It's wipeable, cleanable. If you spill anything in here, you can just wipe it up, no problems. I'm gonna show you how to use this, no worries. I don't use vinyl fuse on the outside, although this is reversible if you want to reverse it and just have the fabric on the inside and the vinyl on the outside, or you can vinyl both of them. It's totally up to you. You can do whatever you want. Medium-sized fabric basket, I cut 11 inches square in the inner fabric, 11 inches square in the outer fabric, 11 inches square in the batting, and nine and a half inches in that fusible heavyweight interfacing. After I'm done quilting this piece right here, this is the outer piece, this is the piece I'm going to quilt, I'm going to trim that down to 10 and a half inches because when we quilt sometimes, things tend to shrink. So the number I want to end up with is 10 and a half. This is going to be the inner fabric. This is the piece that's going to be vinyl. Once I get the vinyl adhered onto this fabric, I'm then going to trim it to 10 and a half. The first thing I'm going to do is lay my outer fabric right on top of the batting. And then I'm going to free motion quilt some roses on it. Remember, we're going to trim this down, so I'm gonna just start on the edge here and I'm not gonna worry about tails or threads or anything. Hopefully you can see that on the back. Now you don't have to free motion quilt if you don't want to. You can do straight line quilting or you can just use your regular presser foot and just move your fabric like I'm showing here in the video. And you can create some waves and some totally different designs just by playing around. I encourage you, play around with the stitching. Let's get this one laminated and then we'll trim everything at the same time. A huge shout out thank you to my latest Sewing Channel supporters, Teddy, April, Eleni, Rhonda, and Lisa. You guys are rock stars, thank you. So since I want this side to show on the inside of our basket, I'm going to lay the sticky side of this on top of the right side of this fabric. So it just peels away like so. And you see it has like a sticky film, but it's not going to stick until we put the hot iron to it. Make sure you use a dry iron though. Follow the directions that are on the package. I don't want my iron to hit the sticky side of this vinyl. Make sure that you don't have any fuzzies stuck in there either because those will be permanent. <laughs> Ask me how I know, right? So per the directions, you at the side that you've taken the vinyl off of, you lay that down 
And then you take your iron and then get one side of it here and start at one end and just slowly go over. And since this piece isn't big enough, I peel up. Oh gosh, I got a hair in there. Oh, that stinks. There's a hair right in there. Oh, it's my hair at least. <laughs> Unbelievable. Just when you think that you're okay and you've covered all your bases, it happens. What are you going to do? Now, if I was selling this though, I would keep this one or give this one away to someone, you know, who knows me and who doesn't care that my DNA is in there, but <laughs> you know, give it to one of my kids maybe or something like that. It's right there. Oh my word. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is lay this down here and then flip that on top of there and then I'm going to press from the back side, press from the wrong side of the fabric. Just to make sure that everything is sticking properly. So I'm always going to think there's a hair in my basket now probably, right? Oh. It's right there. And so it's it is what it is. What are you going to do? Oh, that makes me mad. Oh, it's a dark one, too. Oh. Well, maybe it'll come up on the sides and you won't really see it. Oh, well, I'm not going to fret over it. So I'm going to stand and cut these down to ten and a half inches. I feel like I get a better cut if I'm standing. So each of these are cut now at ten and a half inches. This piece for the medium needs to be cut at nine and a half inches square. On the ultra firm interfacing, you need to look at all four corners here and mark it with two and a half inches square right there. So you'll just put your ruler there, line it up, mark it, and you'll do that to all four. And then you'll just cut these little squares out. It's important to note that on the small basket, I do change that corner square, and I'll have all those measurements for you in the info box below this video. For each fabric basket, you're going to need eight ties, eight separate ties, already cut and finished off in the way that you want on the end of the tassels. For the one I'm making for myself, I'm making these little kind of nautical type ends. Hopefully you can see that. All you do when you make those is just fold the ribbon right in half and then from both of those points at the bottom of the end of the ribbon to slant upwards and make a cut just like that. And that gives you that really cute nautical end. So when you cut sort of on the bias on these ribbons, guess what? They don't shred and shed. So that's actually a good tip for them not to shed and not have to put any knots in them or anything like that. Once you have the ends all figured out, then you're going to measure about eight inches. And you can make these smaller for the smaller basket if you'd like, but I figured about eight inches, seven and a half, eight inches, it works. So I just line it up there and slice. I unroll as I need it and I know I need eight pieces so I just go ahead and fold it there and then corner to corner and then trim. Now you're going to go around and measure two and a half inches in from each corner and mark it. One, two and a half. Come over here and mark one, two, and a half. 
So now I'm going to take each ribbon and where I've marked it here, as you can see from that corner, I'm going to lay the edge of my ribbon right next to this side of that mark. So it's right next to that mark and I'm going to pop a pin and I'm going to do that on all of the sides, on all the marks. This one's right here. So I'm going to lay it on this side of that mark. If you don't lay it on that side of the mark, then you're going to end up with your ribbon right where the tie needs to tie at, and it's going to be right in that corner area and it's not going to look good. So I'm going to lay it right next to that mark here, coming inward toward the center, away from the corner. So we want to stay away from the point, the corners if that helps you think of it easier. <laughs> I don't know. It's important that you push all these to the center so that way when we sew around everything you don't get any of that ribbon caught in there. Once you have everything all pinned all around then you're going to take and put right side down of that vinyl right on top of this. Make sure it's really nice and even. Lift this area up here where you've pinned that. You're going to make sure first that this is all nice and even. There we go. Unpin and repin. And you're going to unpin and repin on all eight spots. We're going to sew a quarter inch around the entire project here, but we need to leave an opening. Mark right here where we need to leave that open. You just need to make sure that your hand can fit in here so that we can turn our work. Bring it over to the sewing machine and we'll start at this end and go all the way around. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and at the end when we stop so that way the stitches aren't pulled when we turn it right side out. at the end so make sure that you back stitch. This is what you should have so far. You can see all of the ribbons in there. The next thing you're going to do is cut the tips of all four corners off. This will eliminate bulk in the corners and make for a nice pointy presentation. And of course you know I had to forget to put my label on when I sewed around it so I'm gonna have to throw that in there at some point. Now take your hand and slip it through that opening and grab all of the four corners out and turn them right side out. Now when you do this, you're going to notice that that shiny laminated side is super wrinkly, but no worries on that. When we press the opposite side of this project, it will make that laminate lay nice and flat. Whenever heat hits it, it lays nice and flat. Grab your turning tool and poke out all of those corners so they are nice and pointy. This is what you should have so far. Now, it looks a little bit like an octopus, right? <laughs> Turn your project so that quilty side is facing up and give it a good press all the way around, being sure that you are rolling out the edges like you see me doing there with my fingers. We don't want any of that fabric tucked in the seam allowance. We want to make sure that everything lays nice and flat. Now I know when I'm pressing on the quilty side that I'm kind of flattening it, but that's okay. It'll fluff up later, but we really need to make sure that that vinyl lays nice and flat. And this is the only way to do that. 
I'm going to set that quarter inch seam allowance on the opening. All I'm going to do is take the quilty part, the fabric part, and fold it in about a quarter inch. Then I'm going to take my hot iron and sort of make a memory crease there. Now I don't want to touch the vinyl with the hot iron. That will be disastrous because when the hot iron hits that vinyl, it will totally melt and you will have a ruined project. So once the fabric side is nicely pressed with that quarter inch, then we're going to work on that vinyl side. All you're going to do is tuck it in to match the edge of the fabric side, the quilty side, turn it over, and then you can see here, I'm going to press it from the quilty side again. By doing that, I'm setting the seam on that vinyl where it's tucked in on the quarter inch. The one thing you need to make sure of again though, don't get your iron close to that vinyl. It will melt, trust me, I know this. <laughs> now that that seam is all set and ready to go when we go to sew the top stitch, we first need to slide in our ultra firm fusible that we have pre-cut ahead of time. Now on my fusible, there are glue dots and that's typically the rough side of the fusible. You want to make sure that that rough side is pointing down toward the quilty side, not the vinyl side. So it's really pliable. All you're going to do is just fold this piece of fusible and just slide it in the opening that you made. Now, depending on the seam allowance that you used on your project, could be a scant quarter inch or a solid quarter inch, your ultra firm fusible may be a bit larger than your project once you get it in there. If that's the case, just take it out and trim what's needed along the edges and then put it back in and it'll be perfectly fine. No one will be none the wiser. <laughs> You just need to make sure that everything is pushed in the right place and you can look inside there or just feel around with your hand that all four edges are covered and you can see right there that's what it looks like and my glue side of the fusible is facing down toward the quilty side. So now if you forget to put your logo tag in like I did, here's an easy fix at the end. Toward the opening, I'm just going to kind of tuck it down in there and then I pinned it and then I'm going to sew across that with a top stitch. So all I'm going to do is just go along the very edge and top stitch all around and that will catch that tag in there keeping that secure. So here's our basket and there's my tag. I mean it's not ideal where the tag is or how I would normally do it but it was a quick fix since I did forget it. The next thing you're going to do is take your ruler and measure two inches from the edge of your project inward and make a line. Now you're going to have four lines within this project and you'll see here in a minute, I'll draw a line, turn the fabric and then draw another two inches. And since my heat erasable pen won't work on the vinyl, that's why I'm doing it on the fabric side. Now I don't show this on camera, but what you're going to do is take it to your sewing machine and put a line of stitching on all the places that you just marked. So just straight line stitching. And you can see here, mine's all done. And it just makes a nice preparation almost right there. I think that's the word. <laughs> so that when we go to fold this basket up, it just helps give it that definition there. Now, in order to give it even more definition, I'm folding up all of the sides, as you see here, paying close attention to the edge with my hot iron on the fabric side. In doing this, I'm also setting that fold on the vinyl side, so keep that in mind. And remember again, don't hit the iron on the vinyl. <laughs> If you're curious about the fabric that I used today, it's probably discontinued, but I'll pop a picture up of the name. You never know if you can find it on eBay or something. I've been hiding this in my stash for a while now, but I thought it would be the perfect fabric for a perfect little fabric basket. So let me show you how I tie this cute little basket up.
what do you all think of this cute little sew and sell quilty fabric reversible cleanable basket <laughs> i'll never be able to unsee that hair that's in there but that's okay this is mine don't forget about the Scrapberry Gingham Quilt Challenge. Those of you that know about the Scrapberry Gingham Quilt Challenge, be sure to take really good pictures and send them to the sewing channel 33 at gmail.com. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go ahead and search it so you can get all the info. Everything's on my channel. I have a whole playlist filled with videos just for sew and sell. Go ahead and click on one of them so we can keep sewing and selling together. Until next time on The Sewing Channel, take care.